North Korea carried out one of its most provocative missile tests in recent years on the morning of the 27th of August, hurling a ballistic missile directly over Japan that prompted the government in Tokyo to warn residents in its path to take cover. The missile flew over the northern island of Hokkaido and landed harmlessly in the sea after a flight of nearly 1,700 miles. The missile was launched from a site near Pyongyang's International Airport, not the usual launch site in the northeast. The test appeared to have been of a recently developed intermediate-range Hwasong-12 missile. It's the same sort of missile that North Korea threatened to fire on the U.S. territory in Guam. Public television programs in Japan were interrupted with a rare warning screen announcing the missile's flight over the country. Several bullet trains were temporarily halted and the government spoke of the missile in unusually dire terms. Shinzo Abe said, North Korea's reckless action of launching a missile that passed over Japan is an unprecedented, serious and grave threat. The missile test rattled the region, increasingly concerned about North Korea's fast-advancing missile capabilities and its increasingly bold way of demonstrating them. In this video, Defense Updates looks into three definitive reasons why the U.S. did not shoot down this missile flying over Japan. So, let's get started. Number 3 The U.S. has stationed classified number of Arleigh Burke-class destroyers in the vicinity of the Korean Peninsula. The Arleigh Burke-class of guided missile destroyers is the United States Navy's first class of destroyer built around the Aegis combat system. Currently, Japan also has six Aegis-equipped destroyers. The Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System is a United States DOD Department of Defense missile defense agency program developed to provide missile defense against short to intermediate range ballistic missiles. Aegis BMD is designed to intercept ballistic missiles post boost phase and prior to re-entry. It enables Arleigh Burke to shoot down enemy ballistic missiles by expanding the Aegis combat system with the addition of the ANSPY-1 radar and standard missile technologies. Aegis BMD equipped vessels can transmit their target detection information to other systems and, if needed, engage potential threats using either the SM-2 or SM-3 missile. Just days after North Korea tested this intermediate range ballistic missile that overflew Japan, the US Navy intercepted a medium range ballistic missile target on August 30th using a new Raytheon standard SM-2 missile. Here are two points to take note. One, the interceptor missiles are supposed to be fired only when the trajectory of the incoming enemy missile is found to be heading towards Japan's landmass. In this case, it was clear that the North Korean missile was heading towards sea with no potential of causing harm. Two, Aegis BMD is effective when the missiles travel within the defended area. The destroyers are obviously currently stationed in positions so that they will protect Japan and don't cover the vast open waters. Positioning the Aegis vessels to counter North Korean missile test is not a good idea as doing so would mean taking them away from optimal positions to defend actual targets on land. Number 2 If the U.S. shoots down any North Korean missile, which actually has no threat potential, it will give away some of the most crucial information regarding the capabilities of Aegis BMD and the deployment of Aegis-enabled vessels. This will enable North Korea to choose a better trajectory and optimize the other parameters to evade the system when an actual missile strike is initiated. It must also be noted that Aegis BMD is a threat to China and Russia too and they are also watching the movements in Korean Peninsula closely. Both of them are likely to mine as much data as possible to understand the abilities of the system. A weapon is most effective if an ambiguity about its capabilities is maintained before the moment of actual use. The US is doing exactly this. Number 1 The United States and South Korea wrapped up their annual joint military exercises on the 28th of August by flying some of their most powerful warplanes in bombing drills 
in a show of force. Two B-1B supersonic bombers and four F-35 stealth fighter jets from the United States Air Force and Marine Corps joined four South Korean F-15 fighter jets in live fire bombing exercises over a military range in eastern South Korea. Officials said South Korean F-15s conducted a similar bombing drill over the same range. Whenever such joint exercises take place, North Korea accuses the South and the United States of preparing for an invasion and often conducts its own military exercises and missile tests. In this already tense situation, an interception of North Korean missile would be a big embarrassment for Kim Jong-un and provoke the volatile leader to do something nasty. It must be noted that Seoul, capital of South Korea, is within 35 miles of the border. Covering only about 12% of the country's area, the Seoul capital area is home to more than 48.2% of South Korea's population and is the world's third largest urban area. Most of the North's artillery pieces, numbering in the thousands, are aimed to strike this area, which will lead to very high casualty. Only twice before has the North fired projectiles over Japanese territory, once in 1998, prompting a minor diplomatic crisis in Asia, and once again at the beginning of the Obama administration in 2009. In both those cases, the North said the rockets were carrying satellites into orbit. In this case, it made no such claim. While the missile did fly over Japan, it's very likely that the missile test was not designed to signal Japan that it's now higher on the DPRK's target list. It has more to do with geography than anything else. North Korea needs to accurately test its missiles to obtain a full measure of their capability and firing them over Japan is the most obvious choice. As the situation threatens to boil over, the main stakeholders, South Korea, Japan and the US, need to come up with a more effective approach in dealing with North Korea. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.